Hello, Merry Christmas. Uh, this is the second day of Christmas. It's the Feast of St. Stephen. St. Stephen was the first Christian martyr, uh, and we hear of his martyrdom in the, I guess it's the Acts of the Apostles, where um, Saul, who later becomes Paul, St. Paul, um, held the cloaks of those who were stoning um, Stephen for um, blasphemy and um, as a new Christian. And um, and so anyway, it's his feast day today. So it's the second day of Christmas. So Christmas, you know, we have the traditional 12 days of Christmas, but there's really a Christmas octave, which goes from Christmas day through New Year's day. Um, and it's sort of, you know, I don't know why it's an octave, except Hanukkah's in, um, eight days and even Passover can be eight days. Um, though that might be a newer thing. It's, I think it's traditionally seven days, but they add another day because um, because of the diaspora, I think, because Jews are all throughout the earth, so, so all over the world, so they can't celebrate Passover exactly on the same day, so they make it a two-day, I think. I, I think that was the reasoning. But anyway, we have a Christmas octave, and then we have the 12 days of Christmas. And then you actually can, uh, traditionally, it was Christmas tied from Christmas all the way to Candlemas, or the Feast of the Presentation of uh, Jesus in the Temple, which is February 2nd, which is actually tied to Groundhog's Day through tradition, I think Germanic tradition. Um, anyway, so, you know, it, it's not, it, the season doesn't end on Christmas Day. It actually is beginning according to uh, the Roman Catholic calendar and older calendars. I think it switched and became sort of really focused on Christmas Day when we got a little bit more, you know, industrial revolution and capitalism and the Victorians with more disposable income and that sort of thing. And, and so gift giving became the main thing and Christmas Day then became the main thing. And then it seemed like everything was over, but it's not, it's the second day. So Merry Christmas. As my, uh, pastor always says, Merry Christmas Tide. And the day, uh, yesterday I gave um, the five-year-old the 12 days of Christmas in the evening and he actually seemed to have enjoyed it. You know, he was really, kids get so overwhelmed if you give them too many gifts and that's what he was getting. I mean, he didn't even notice that he got a new bike. <laughs> He was he was so taken with the plushies, his Pokemon plushies and his Ori plushie, um, that and because he loves to play with those things all day long. He he either they're little woodland um, creatures like squirrels or whatever or something squirrel related because he's really into that in Pokemon. Um, and you know he's an only child during COVID. That's how he plays. He just plays with all these plushies all day. Anyway. So, uh, he didn't really absorb all the gifts that he'd gotten, you know, the fact that he'd gotten all these gifts. Um, so it's going to take a little while. We adults just overwhelm kids, I think. Um, and maybe it's not really right. But anyway, so I thought, well, he's not going to care about these picture books. But we did read and sing the 12 Days of Christmas last night, and I told him that he was going to get a new book every day for 12 days. And this morning when he got up, he remembered. He was playing for a while, and then he said, Did, am I going to get another book today? So I was kind of delighted that he remembered. So um, so we did play Hot and Cold, and that was good. I, I, that's really good for him because he's not that good at hide-and-seek yet. He he still thinks that, you know, if he goes and hides, you know, someplace pretty obvious that he's hiding somehow. I don't. He needs to work on that. Anyway, um so it was good playing hot and cold because he understood when I got colder, when I said cold, that he was going further away and I had to give him some hints so he could find it. I hid it a little too well. But anyway, all that is prefaced to this. This is uh, book number two for day number two of Christmas, Good King Wenceslas. Um, this is a beautiful book. And I picked this book because it mentions the Feast of St. Stephen. And really, the only reason why we consider this a Christmas carol is because it does mention the Feast of St. Stephen, which is the day after Christmas, uh, December 26th. Uh, and that's why we're singing it. It doesn't really have anything to do with uh, the birth of Christ or anything. Uh, but it's a beautiful song. And this one has just gorgeous illustrations. Let's see if you can see some of them. They're lining up the... Um, 
they're loading up the pine logs to take to the peasant. The good, the good king has seen and is going to go visit. And his page, his, his faithful page is helping him. Let me get to the last. Here's, here's the king visiting the peasant, holding the baby. There's the page. There they are. Anyway, it's a lovely book. And um, we read it out loud, and I told him the story. And we listened to a couple of versions. We listened to Bing Crosby's version and the Irish Rover's version, uh, which is kind of more upbeat. Anyway, so that is um, our picture book for the second day of Christmas, and I will see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas, Tide!